ever looked up at the sky and wondered about those white lines left behind by planes? These streaks, known as contrails, are a common sight in our skies, yet they are often misunderstood. Contrails are essentially the footprints of an aircraft, left high in the sky. They're formed when hot jet exhaust cools down rapidly in the chilly atmosphere, transforming into tiny ice crystals that we see as white trails. Now you might have heard some theories suggesting that these are more than just innocent trails of water vapor. While these misconceptions may be intriguing, it's important to understand the science behind contrails to separate fact from fiction. We'll dive into the mechanics of their formation, explore what exactly they're composed of, and even discuss their different types. We'll also touch on their environmental impact and address the hot topic of contrails versus chemtrails. So, are you ready to unravel the mystery behind these white trails? Let's dive in. Contrails do not just appear, they are the result of a fascinating process. Let's imagine for a moment, you're on a plane, cruising at an altitude of over 35,000 feet. Outside your window, the engines are working hard, burning fuel to keep you soaring above the earth. But did you know that this combustion process plays a crucial role in the formation of contrails? Contrails or condensation trails are essentially human-made clouds that form when hot humid air from jet exhaust cools and condenses in the frigid low-pressure environment high in the atmosphere. The recipe for contrails involves three key ingredients, temperature, pressure, and humidity. Firstly, temperature. The atmosphere up there is extremely cold, often below minus 40 degrees Celsius. This cold air is essential because it causes the water vapor in the jet exhaust to rapidly cool and condense to form tiny water droplets or ice particles. Secondly, pressure. At high altitudes, the atmospheric pressure is significantly lower than at sea level. This low pressure allows the hot humid air from the jet exhaust to expand and cool quickly, aiding in the condensation process. Lastly, humidity. The amount of moisture already present in the atmosphere plays a significant role in contrail formation. If the air is dry, the water droplets or ice particles will evaporate quickly, and the contrail will be short-lived. However, if the air is humid, the contrail will persist and may even grow as the water vapor in the surrounding air freezes onto the contrail particles. So as you sit there high above the earth, sipping your in-flight coffee, remember that you're not just on a journey. You're also part of a fascinating process, a process that transforms jet exhaust into beautiful cloud-like trails that streak across the sky. Now that we understand how they form, let's explore what they're made of. Contrails are not just water vapor, there's more to them than meets the eye. You see, contrails are a fascinating cocktail of various elements, each playing a crucial role in their formation and persistence. At the heart of a contrails composition is water vapor, the primary ingredient. This vapor comes from the aircraft's engine as it burns fuel. The hot and humid exhaust gases mix with the cooler surrounding air, condensing the water vapor into tiny water droplets or ice particles, depending on the ambient temperature. But water vapor alone doesn't tell the full story of contrails. Aircraft engine emissions are a significant part of this equation. The combustion process in the engine releases not only water vapor but also carbon dioxide, soot, and trace amounts of sulfur compounds. These particles serve as nuclei or seeds, around which the water vapor condenses, forming the visible contrail we see streaking across the sky. Lastly, we must consider the atmospheric particles already present in the sky. These microscopic particles such as dust and other aerosols can also act as condensation nuclei, helping to shape the contrail's formation and persistence. So, when we look up and see those white streaks crisscrossing the sky, we're not just seeing water vapor, we're seeing a complex interplay of water, engine emissions and atmospheric particles all coming together to create the visible contrails. With that knowledge, we can now identify the different types of contrails. Not all contrails are the same, they vary based on several factors. Indeed, contrails, those long, thin, white clouds trailing behind aircraft, come in three main types, short-lived, persistent and spreading. Each type provides a unique glimpse into the atmospheric conditions at the time of its formation. Let's start with short-lived contrails. As the name suggests, these contrails don't stick around for long. They form when an aircraft flies through areas of low humidity in the upper atmosphere. The water vapor in the jet exhaust quickly condenses and then evaporates, often disappearing in a matter of minutes or even seconds. Short-lived contrails are like fleeting sketches on the canvas of the sky, quickly drawn and quickly erased. Next, we have persistent contrails. These contrails form under higher humidity conditions and can linger in the sky for hours, 
persistent contrails can be seen as long unbroken lines tracing the aircraft's path across the sky. The water vapor in the exhaust condenses and freezes, and these ice crystals can stay suspended in the air for a long time before they finally dissolve. Lastly, we have spreading contrails. These are persistent contrails that have spread out due to wind and turbulence to form wider areas of cirrus cloud cover. Depending on the wind patterns and the level of humidity these can end up covering a large part of the sky. Spreading contrails can sometimes be so expansive that they are indistinguishable from natural cloud formations. So what factors determine the type of contrail that forms? It's a combination of altitude, temperature, and atmospheric humidity. The higher the humidity and the colder the temperature, the more likely it is that a persistent or spreading contrail will form. Conversely, short-lived contrails are more likely to form in warmer, drier conditions. And so, the next time you see a contrail in the sky you can impress your friends with your newfound knowledge. Are they short-lived sketches, persistent lines, or spreading clouds? Each tells a unique story about the atmospheric conditions at that moment. Contrails, however, are not without their environmental implications. Contrails might look harmless but they can have significant environmental impact. Contrails, those wispy white lines in the sky, aren't just pretty to look at. They're also a source of environmental concern. The science behind contrails reveals a fascinating interplay between atmospheric conditions and aircraft emissions. But what happens when these two meet? Contrails form when the hot, humid exhaust from aircraft engines meets the cold, dry air of the upper atmosphere. This creates a cloud-like trail across the sky, but these aren't just ordinary clouds, they're dense, high-altitude clouds that can persist for hours, spreading and merging with other contrails to create a blanket of artificial cloud cover. Now, why is this a concern? Well, these contrails and the clouds they form can trap heat radiating from the Earth's surface, contributing to global warming. While contrails only make up a small fraction of all clouds, their impact is amplified because they form at high altitudes where the warming effect is stronger. Moreover, increased cloud cover can disrupt weather patterns and reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. This could have implications for solar power generation and agriculture. Understanding the environmental impact of contrails is crucial as air travel continues to grow. It's a complex issue that requires further study and, potentially, new strategies for mitigating their effects. Now let's address a common myth, contrails versus chemtrails. Many confuse contrails with chemtrails, but are they the same? Well, let's dive right into it. Contrails, short for condensation trails, are the white streaks we often see in the sky, trailing behind aircraft. They form when hot jet exhaust cools rapidly in the high-altitude, low-pressure air, condensing the water vapor present in the exhaust into tiny ice crystals. On the other hand, the term chemtrails is a product of conspiracy theories. The idea is that certain trails left by aircraft are chemical or biological agents deliberately sprayed for sinister purposes undisclosed to the general public. However, there's a glaring issue with this theory. It lacks any credible scientific evidence to back it up. Extensive studies have been conducted on contrails and the substances found within them. The results? Contrails are composed primarily of water vapor, with trace amounts of aircraft engine emissions like sulfur compounds and soot particles. There's no secret stash of harmful chemicals being dumped into the atmosphere. Moreover, the longevity and spreading of contrails in the sky is dependent on atmospheric conditions, rather than the supposed chemical composition of the trails. For instance, in a humid, cold atmosphere, contrails can persist and spread out into cirrus cloud formations. This is a natural meteorological phenomenon, not a clandestine operation. Of course, this doesn't mean contrails don't have environmental implications, they do contribute to climate change, as we've discussed in the previous scene. But the notion that they are intentionally harmful chemtrails is a myth. In the world of science, evidence is king. It's important to question, to investigate, but also to acknowledge the weight of scientific consensus. Conspiracy theories may be enticing, but they often lack the rigorous testing and evidence that true scientific understanding demands. So the next time you look up at the sky, you'll know exactly what those white lines are. Remember, science is everywhere. Even in the trails left behind by planes, 